This is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. In a Knox County primary election in the GOP race for mayor, we saw more than 40,000 votes. The winning margin was 23 votes. Does it get any closer? It does, but almost never. The race moves to the general election in August, but this morning we welcome the Republican nominee. He is here with us, Glenn Jacobs. Nice to have you with us this Thank morning. You. Appreciate it. Congratulations on the Thanks. win. Well, let me introduce our panel and then we'll get to questions. On the end there is a Democrat and marketing manager named Ramsey Cohen. You may know his dad. Good morning. Nice to have you with us. Thank Susan you. Richardson Williams joins us. She is a Republican and she runs her own PR firm. Good morning, John. Good morning. And John North runs the digital show at WBIR.com. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations again. 23 votes. What <laughs> helped you put it over the top? Uh, our ground game. We knocked on 50,000 doors over the course of the campaign. Uh, our, our campaign was uh, really a combination of extremely low tech and high tech. Uh, we, had, we had a great ground game. Uh, we also did a robust direct mail program. And we, uh, because of uh, you know, my celebrity, I guess, but you know, that, that natural thing that I bring to the table, uh, we had had a really great social media presence and we were just able to to utilize those and uh, have a great deal of synergy between those and of course as with anything i just had a tremendous team and uh you know if, if anything it was my team and my volunteers they just did a tremendous job you talked about knocking on fifty thousand doors do you have a sense of how many doors you knocked on personally uh for me uh Probably 3,000. Yeah, uh, 50,000 would be a lot yeah, for one person. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, you know, people ask me, you know, when I knock on a door, it's a little different too, because I'm a really big guy. So, uh, yeah, I, I may get a unique reaction yes. when I knock on the door. But, but still, you know, and that's the most important thing I think in a local election is just that, that person to person interaction. One of the things that Politico's talked about before your win was he's going to need the younger voters to be motivated and to get out. In looking at the numbers, do you think that happened in the primary? Yes. Uh, I hate this term, but I think we had a lot of non-traditional voters that voted, a lot of first-time voters and a lot of young people. Um, I would like to see that continue as well. Uh, you know, I, I want to see those people stay in the system and keep participating. Uh, you know, just voting one time, that's great, but um, as far as the legacy of this campaign, you know, I think it's wonderful that so many people that don't normally vote did get involved in the system, and I'd like to see that continue. Glenn, I wanted to ask you, I think one of the things we've talked about on this panel for several weeks, and then saw it happen in the election, was the, the folks that were tired of politicians uh, being elected, and you certainly were non-traditional, <laughs> as you said, as a candidate, and, and obviously as your supporters. Um, I, I'm told you also went out and registered voters yes, and new voters, which do you think that was one of the things? I mean, 23 votes. Yeah, I'm you sure gotta, it was. Yeah. You got to think, surely you registered at least that many that you got to the polls on your behalf. Yes, but talk, talk a little bit about that as being the non-traditional candidate as opposed to you had, you had two opponents who were county commissioners. Uh, and, and if I can say something about the race just in general, uh, I was really proud of the way that all three of us conducted ourselves. There was very little, um, and we got our jabs in, of course. We were competitive people, that's going to happen. But there wasn't much dirt, there wasn't any mudslinging. And I, I would like to thank um, my opponents for that. I thought that they did a really, really good job in that area. I'm, I'm very proud of them for doing that. Uh, but as to your point, um, we knew that my only opportunity of winning really was to be able to tap into people that maybe normally wouldn't vote, especially in an election like this, because of course, if you look at people that generally vote in an election like this, it's a very small percentage of the demographic. Um, we had to widen that out, you know, and that's what we tried to do. So uh, we did register a lot of people to vote. Um, you know, we just kept on hitting people on social media. One of the things was, uh, was really cool that we did on Facebook and Twitter is we had a countdown to early voting. So each day we had a graphic, 11 days, 10 days, just to try to get uh, some excitement brewing and, and did that sort of thing. Well, I, I find that really interesting because one of the things I noticed this time was after early voting, then I started getting a lot of mailings. That last week, 
I don't know how many, I must have gotten eight or ten mailings. I've already voted. I voted day right. one because I'm afraid I'll die and I want to vote and make sure, <laughs> make sure I vote, you know, so I always vote early. But um, it, it's interesting to me that you said that and that you really did focus on the countdown to early voting. That may have made certainly the difference in your 23 votes. Yeah, but then what happened was the early voting numbers came out. I was oh, putting votes down. Which that was what was so interesting. That, that yeah. was shocking to me, actually. You, you yeah. lost the early vote, right? But you won on election day. Yeah. And so how did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, I think part of it may have been with a lot of our literature. Um, we had May 1st mm -hmm. in big, bold letters, and then we had early voting, but it just wasn't as big. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know, and I was actually election night, I was very disappointed and, uh, uh, frankly, a little depressed for uh, a, while. You know, a while when I saw those early voting numbers come back. Did you, uh, did the campaign do internal polling? I mean, did you all do your own we, polling? We, we only did one poll, uh -huh. and that was very early on. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and, and the thing was, um, Polling is important, but I think that often it's it's important to determine what the issues are, uh, you know. And I think also that just a lot of things are changing. And I'm certainly not a polling skeptic. But we saw it in the presidential election, where if you were to believe the polls, you know, Hillary Clinton should have won in a landslide, but then of course Donald Trump uh, won. You know, pretty significantly. So, did your uh, polls bear out what you saw? It, it was so early it that didn't it didn't matter. We we were just and we were sort of looking at issue-oriented questions and that sort of thing. And then, as, as of course, as things would develop, you get out and you talk to people, and you can pretty much determine um, what's on people's minds. You know. Glenn, well, I'm curious. Uh, what what do you think you might be doing to engage some of these people that just participate in the process for the first time, as you continue to. You know, I, I think even at a local level now, social media has become mm -hmm. huge. Uh, a friend of mine who is in the know said that in 2016, the Republican National Committee told candidates to spend about 16% of their budget on social media. That's up to 50% now. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, these are bigger races, uh, you know, where you don't have the ability to go out and talk with people personally. But nevertheless, I, I think that social media does have an impact, especially among younger people, and that's something that we have to utilize going forward. We're going to take a quick break on Inside Tennessee. We've talked a little bit about how you won. We'll talk about how you might govern if you win in August. More on the issues when we come back with Glenn Jacobs.